Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode number five in season 18, which is a chronological study in Titus. We're in chapter one here today. We've looked at some elder qualifications and elders we found yesterday should be powerfully able to teach, mightily attached to the word, inordinately apt to use it and aimed in the right direction. That is its sound doctrine and the sound faith of its hearers. This is from Titus chapter 1, verse 9. He must be hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught, so that he may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine and also to rebuke those who contradict it. So today we're going to answer the question uh, as to why. Why does he have to hold firm to trustworthy teaching and give instruction in sound doctrine and rebuke those who contradict it? Well, listen in. For there are many who are insubordinate, empty talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision party. They must be silenced since they are upsetting whole families by teaching for shameful gain. There's money in it again. What they ought not to teach. One of the Cretans, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, and lazy gluttons. This testimony is true. Therefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith, not devoting themselves to Jewish myths and the commands of people who turn away from the truth. To the pure, all things are pure, but to the defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure, but both their minds and their consciousness are defiled. They profess to know God but they deny him in their works. They are detestable, disobedient, unfit for any good work. Then I'm going to flip over into chapter 2, verse 1. But as for you, teach what accords with sound doctrine. All right, so let's review kind of the problem here. Is He wants Titus to be a good teacher and to leave good teachers in his congregation. That is, appoint elders that are... Uh, and pastor, shepherds, overseers, all the same office that are, are good teachers. Why is that? Well, here, here's the reason. is because there are many who are insubordinate. So it's a, a multi-pronged attack. They are insubordinate. So that has to do with the authority structure. We talked about subjection to and submission to, which is the voluntary placing oneself underneath. And this is a person that says, I want to be outside of that uh, submission plan. I want to be outside of the protection of it, and I also want to be outside of the accountability of it. So don't, you know, just side point here is don't don't be outside that plan in the church. It's for your protection. All right. Uh, these bad teachers are in the church, and um, they're kind of relying on historically comfortable things, you know, Jewish myths, history of circumcision, and uh, they are not silent. They should be silent, but they're not silent. He says they must be silent. So there's something here that has to happen, which is the silencing of these uh, erroneous teachers. So why do we need to silence them? Well, they're having an effect on the congregation, on, on believers. They're upsetting families. And they're revealing the character of the persons who's doing it. Somehow they're getting shameful gains, so they're 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 profiting in some sort of a bad way uh, from this. So we, we talked about you know how pastors fail and and profit and power are, uh, are are two of them, and they are wrong. So this is not just hey certain people should be and shouldn't be teachers. There's a judgment with this. There's a discernment that that the church is giving to its its teaching. And they should be rebuked. More than silenced, not just, you know, be quiet, but be quiet and you're wrong. So there are some in this group that are in the faith. And and Paul is saying to Titus, we want you to rescue these people. We want you to restore these people. We want people to be restored, to be sound in the faith. And probably some as well are outside of the faith. That is, that they're professing to know God. So they got half of the fruit, right? So you, so when you say, is that person a Christian? You, there's two things you do. You look at their fruit, the fruit of their mouth. So what are they speaking? Do they speak to know God? That's half the battle. But then the other thing is but deny him by his work. So they failed the second half of the test, which is to look at their actions and their deeds. So we want to beware of false prophets. As it says in Matthew 7, you'll recognize them by their fruit. Every healthy tree bears good fruit. 
and um, so the wolves in the sheep clothing are rightfully upsetting the sheep. So being in the church building doesn't make you a good elder or overseer or good teacher. And being in the good in the church building doesn't make you a good member of the church, a good listener either. More is required here. And he's saying to Titus and his people, wake up. The leaders have to teach sound doctrine and the members have to retreat, receive sound doctrine and, and really kind of demand it. Search the scriptures. All right, so be sound in the faith, be healthy, be well. You cannot have a healthy church without healthy teach, teaching. You cannot have, uh, so sound doctrine begets sound faith. And healthy doctrine develops healthy faith. And sound teaching protects sound uh, faith. And good teaching is inseparable from good practice. So we need to assess continually our faith, assess our doctrine, assess what we hear from our pastors, our teachers, our priests, and our podcasters. Uh, so in other words, be a good listener and assess your exposure to good, healthy, and I would say strongly biblical teaching. Uh, and we need to all assess our reliance and desperation and dependency on it. Why is that? Because you can't separate sound doctrine from sound faith. You can't separate good teaching from good practice. You can't separate sound teaching from real fruit. They're intimately um, and basically 100% re- re- related. So, Alan uh, Patton in Cry the Beloved Country, he left his people with the charge, be well. And sound doctrine has the meaning of good healthiness. And so that's what he's saying here is, I want you to be healthy in this area. So I leave you with Alan Patton's charge, be well, be healthy, get good, good doctrine. Thanks for listening.